Hello students. Today we are starting a new chapter that is bending stresses in the beams. You know from the word what is bending stress. You can see in this figure that when a horizontal beam is subjected to load, vertical load from above or below of the beam, then there is a bending moment which is going to be act on the beam. And this bending moment generates, generates bending stresses in the beams, which is going to deflect the beam like this, like this. So the bending of the beam will occur. Now the beam is made up of different layers. So on each and every layer, there is a different amount of bending stress is generating. So in this chapter, we are going to find the bending stresses at different layers of the beams. Now let us understand the procedure step by step. As a matter of fact, the bending moment at a section tends to bend or deflect the beam and the internal stresses resist its bending. The process of bending stops when every cross section sets up full resistance to the bending moment. The resistance offered by the internal stresses to the bending is called bending stress. And the relevant theory is called the theory of pure or simple bending. So let us study the assumptions of this beam in the theory of pure bending. Means beam is assumed to be containing certain properties. Let us see which type of properties the beam can pertain. So you can see that this is the assumptions in the theory of simple bending. Now, there are total six assumptions which we have made during the theory of bending. The first one is the material of the beam is perfectly homogeneous, of the same kind throughout and isotropic means equal elastic properties in the all the directions. Means the beam is made up of same material. Suppose it is made up of concrete, then it is made up of concrete only throughout the length of the beam. And the elastic properties is same in all directions means we can assume that if the elongation of the beam is occurring for certain amount in the front side then it is the same elongation occurring in the back side. Number two, the beam material is stressed within its elastic limit and thus obeys Hooke's law means the beam material is having some limit up to which it can be stressed. Number three, the transverse sections while which were plain before bending remains plain after bending also means beam is made up of plane by plane by plane means layer by layer by layer so due to bending layers of the beam are not disturbing okay you can say last layer will remain last layer first layer will remain first layer before bending after bending also number four each layer of the beam is free to expand or contract independently of the layer above or below it means each and every layer are independent they can independently expand or contract number five the value of young's modulus or modulus of elasticity is the same in tension and compression and last number six is the beam is in equilibrium there is no resultant pull or push in the beam section so these six are the assumptions in the theory of simple bending this assumptions may be asked in your exam for 2 to 3 marks. Let us now derive the main equation of bending stress that is sigma b. We know that in the simple stress and strain some definitions are there. Stress is equal to load upon area, strain equal to change in length upon original length. Notations are also clear. For the stress we are using sigma and for the strain we are using epsilon. Let us concentrate on this figure for deriving the bending stress. Suppose you can imagine that this is the rectangular beam. Okay, this is the rectangular beam, and cross section is drawn over here. You can say the name of the beam is RS, RS, which is a neutral layer, okay, which is a centroidal axis. You can say from this we have cut two sections. Section one is AB, and section one is C section 2 is CD. So between AB and CD we are cutting a horizontal strip from the beam that is PQ. You can see it is PQ having a length DX. 
as you can see in the figure having length dx. Now bending moment is applied on this wheel in upward direction from both the sides M M. The upper layer is AC while the lower layer of the wave is BD. So this is basically the figure of the cross section of the wave. Now at the upper layer the bending stress is higher sigma B same as in the bottom layer. While at the neutral axis you can see from this figure at the neutral axis the bending stress is zero. So neutral axis cannot be stretched. So neutral axis remains of the same length before bending and after bending. This figure is of the case of before bending and this is the case of after bending in which bending stress is generated. Let us uh, understand some notations. What is M? That is movement acting on the beam. What is theta? Angle of subtended at the center by the arc. Means when the beam is going to bend like this, here it is the imaginary center O at which the angle is subtended. This angle is theta. R is equal to radius of curvature of the beam. So from this center, this is the R, radius of curvature of the beam up to neutral axis. Now consider the names. The plane AC becomes plane A dash C dash. Plane PQ becomes the plane P dash Q dash. Plane RS means neutral axis becomes the plane R dash S dash. Because remember that RS is equal to R dash S dash. And as at the neutral axis, the bending stress is zero. Neutral axis is not going to stress due to this bending moment. This is our assumption. <coughs> and the last plane BD becomes the plane B dash D dash. So these are the positions of the points, position of the planes after bending. So you can imagine that B dash D dash will be increased in length while the upper layers A dash C dash and P dash Q dash are decreased in length. Or you can say that layers above the neutral axis are contracting while the layers below the neutral axis are expanding. This is the general phenomena in the bending of each and every beams. Now let us consider the theory of trace. What happens with the equation? Let us see that. You can see the same figure over here and consider some notations. Now consider a layer PQ at a distance y from RS. So this is the layer PQ at a distance vertical distance y from the neutral axis. Okay. Now let this layer be compressed to P dash Q dash after bending. So in after the bending this layer becomes P dash Q dash means decreased in length. So what is the decrement? So decrement in the length is known as delta decrease in length which is equal to bigger minus smaller value. So bigger value means original value is PQ minus new length is P dash Q dash. So difference will give the delta L. Now what is strain epsilon? So strain epsilon is equal to Delta L upon original length means change in length upon original length. So replace the value, you will get change in length means PQ minus P dash Q dash original means PQ. So this is the equation of strain. Now from the same figure, you can see this is going to be similar triangles. Suppose this is a small arc then O P dash Q dash. You can see O P dash Q dash. This is going to be a triangle. While the another triangle is O R dash H dash. This is also going to be the triangle. So this both the triangles are similar triangles as you can see from the figure. So we can take the ratios of this size. How? We can take P dash Q dash upon R dash H dash. P dash Q dash means base of this triangle. R dash H dash means base of this triangle. Is equal to height upon height. So height of the upper triangle means this triangle up to P dash Q dash which is equal to R minus Y. Why R minus Y? Because the distance between PQ and RS is Y, vertical distance. You just imagine this distance is Y between the strip and the layer R dash S dash. And the lower height is R means lower height means the height of the triangle O R dash S dash which is equal to R up to this layer. So now Subtract uh, some mathematical terms are applicable over here. Just uh, multiply these two equations with the help of minus sign. So these are the minus signs. And thereafter add 1 on both the sides. 
though so we have added one on both the sides and then after taking the lcm we will get r dash s dash over here minus p dash q dash here it is r you can just imagine one step is skipped over here r minus r plus y due to bracket opening upon r so final multiplication or final simplification is y upon r so r dash s dash minus p dash q dash upon is equal to y upon r but in the denominator here it is r dash which is becoming now pq so why r dash is this is becoming pq the reason is written over here pq is equal to r dash s dash is equal to neutral axis see in the figure r dash s dash is not going to change in the beam before bending so r dash s dash which is equal to r s in the earlier beam you can go back and check the figure r s and r s is equal to pq because the beam is rectangle okay so now the equation becomes pq minus p dash q dash upon pq which is equal to y upon r so this term this left side term as we have discussed earlier it is the strain epsilon for the particular strip so epsilon is equal to y by r so here it is our equation number one you can say epsilon is equal to y by r what is epsilon epsilon means stress what is y y is the distance between strip and neutral axis what is r r is the radius of curvature let us go ahead in this it is obvious that the strain is replaced in this formula I means stress is equal to strain into elasticity which is the formula of hooke's law epsilon sigma b is equal to strain into elasticity which we have studied earlier in the simple stress and strain now replace epsilon is equal to y by r over here e remains as it is so final equation is y into e by r okay because epsilon is equal to y by r as earlier now just arrange the terms left side here it is sigma b so y will going left side in the denominator of sigma b so it is sigma b upon y so right side it is only e by r or you can say that making the subject sigma b it is e by r into y so this is our pure bending equation so this is the equation of bending stress so sigma b is equal to e by r into y now what is sigma b sigma b is equal to bending stress what is e e is equal to modulus of elasticity what is r r is the radius of curvature for the bent beam and y is the distance of layer pq from the neutral axis so here it is the relation between bending stress modulus of elasticity radius of curvature and the vertical distance y but we will find the relation of bending stress in terms of bending moment also so in the next lecture we will derive the relationship between the bending stress and bending moment and we will consider some three to four cases to find the bending moment and then after we will start the numericals so just go through this lecture again and again and realize that what is the bending moment and what is the bending stress so Till then, goodbye students, we will discuss more topics in the next lecture.